So we are all here today, which means we did not win the Powerball lottery <laughs> last night. But somebody in California did one single winner in California, somewhere in a gas station outside of Los Angeles. It's a lot. Uh, yeah. Got over two two billion. Two yeah. two point oh four billion dollars. So would you take the cash option or would you do it over thirty years? Well, you know what they say: the lottery typically wrecks your life. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw that the the security or something behind it, something went faulty last night for the drawing. Yeah, one of the states hadn't finalized all of the ticket sales or something. They were waiting on something. And ironically, my buddy came in from uh, Hawaii for my baby shower. By the way, thank you guys. For I everybody am, that came to the baby shower. I am a girl dad. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and a girly man. <laughs> gosh, dang it, Dave. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, you know, there's no lottery in Hawaii. I mean, if you live in Hawaii, haven't you already won the lottery? Good point. It's a rare condition this day and age to read any good news on the newspaper page. And love and tradition of the grand design, some people say it's even harder to find. Yeah, he came. He came to visit for the baby shower, and he told me that. So we we were, we talked about going to the gas station buying a ticket, but I I didn't play. Did you play? Uh, yes, I played. It didn't work. No. But the ironically, the last big ticket that got sold in San Jose was on the Coozer Seven Eleven, mm -hmm. which is kind of by Dartmouth Middle School, which is the Seven uh, Eleven I I grew up going to. You used to steal candy from there when you were a kid. I did. <laughs> I used to steal packs of gum. That was my big thing. All right. So uh, it is. November, we're here. I think we have what seven weeks till the end of the year, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, things have shaken up. Take us through. So here we go <laughs> with our weekly market minute, brought to you by uh, the letter A A for active inventory, <laughs> and, and and the number eight. As in, there are 873 active properties in Santa Clara County right now. So, so we're trending downwards. We talk about that every week. Uh, we'll probably get to the year about 600 or so homes on the market, I think, by uh, New Year's Eve. And, and that's going to continue throughout the first couple of months of next year. Which is not very many because you have all these really high-priced $30, $40 million homes and then a lot of things that are just stale at that point. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. So 600 homes for... Two million plus people. Um, you know that's why when people talk about Bay Area real estate crashing, right, it's just not going to happen. We're well, correcting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last year around this time, we had about four hundred homes on the market. Um, as we head into December, uh, it's just going to get lower and lower. It's funny how people say, "Oh, I'm waiting for a correction. I'm waiting for a correction," and then it corrects, and then they're like, "I'm waiting for a crash. I'm waiting for a crash." <laughs> Yeah. I'm just like, oh, I, I don't think you want to buy a house. Is what yeah. I, I really think. So just enjoy running. But anyway, back to the market minute. I'm going to rip through this really quickly. Go ahead. 873 active single family homes in Santa Clara County, 525 pendings. So we're still cruising at about a month and a half's worth of inventory. Very, very low compared to most of the rest of the United States. Same thing goes for condos and townhomes. 387 active condos and townhomes and 252 pending. So the market, you know, market is still moving. Uh, very limited inventory, uptick in sales this past month, and we still have 210 off-market and coming soon homes. So for those buyers that are stubborn and still want to buy, despite what I say on the podcast, we have 210 off-market properties that may be a great fit for you. Um, you know, maybe there's a particular home you're looking for in a specific neighborhood, backs up to a golf course, a foothill, kind of hard to find. Uh, you know, you definitely want to take advantage of those opportunities when they come across. So. You know, as always, reach out to one of us and, and we'll share that list with you that you won't find on Zillow or Redfin or any of those other portals. People mm -hmm. often ask when we talk about off markets, mm -hmm. what, what does that really mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're getting this crazy slam dunk deal, right? It means that there's usually something with the seller that mm -hmm. is preventing them from wanting to go active on the market, right? Some people don't want people coming through with muddy shoes during yeah. Thanksgiving when they have their entire family in. Yep. But if you have a qualified buyer, right? And maybe you shot out, you know, ten e emails to ten agents that you know are pretty prominent and evergreen, or you know, mm -hmm. whatever area your clients are looking. 
if the seller doesn't have to paint and stage and do all of that, and there's right. kind of that buy it now price and your clients understand the current market conditions and mm -hmm. are willing to pay the fair value, sometimes you can do it. Um, but but <laughs> I think the biggest thing to get out of it is it off market doesn't mean, oh my God, it's smoking deal. Five hundred thousand dollars less than what of you course. should pay. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And um, another good reason to work with agents that have those off market properties is, is, like I said, if there's a unique property that you're looking for. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of inventory historically. Mm -hmm. So, so if you find, you know, if you're if you're a buyer, you find, man, this is like the perfect house, but maybe it's just not the right time. It, a house like that may not come up again for another six to twelve months. Mm -hmm. So, when you know, in our valley, when you come across something that checks most of those boxes, regardless of the market that we're in, you know, it's probably a good idea to buy it if if you're really buying for the long term and it's a home that you can see yourselves, you know, living in and growing into over time. Yeah, no, I agree. And we were talking earlier. It, you're never going to buy a house and feel like, oh my God, I timed the market perfectly. It's only going to go no. up from here, right? Yeah. So it should feel uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. 2008, 2009, I'm sure if you bought a house, nobody looked at you at that time and said, wow, great buy, right? <laughs> yeah. But in, you know, 2017, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, yeah when you, you look back, you're, you're like, yeah, sitting on equity. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, buying a house in a, in a down market ultimately creates opportunity and options for you down the road. Yeah. yeah. And riches are made in a down market, right? Like uh, as long as you're holding it for seven, ten plus years, we've seen historically the prices have always come back up, and you've been, you know, break even or, or more. So, yeah. And then one thing that we were saying earlier as well, David, is um, we get asked all the time, "Why did you become a real estate agent?" Or I'm thinking about becoming a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. There's two things that I think are fundamental keys of being someone that's going to be a good real estate agent. One, an incredible person at sales, right? Your job is to what? Sell. <laughs> sell, but get the most money when you sell the house and save your client the most money when, when you buy buying. them the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then two is networking, right? If there's 10 offers, why would the seller's agent want to take you over Joe Schmo, who's at the same price and no one's willing to come up? They're going to go mm -hmm. with who they like more. Cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And great example of that is Ben just got one into contract uh, in Morgan Hill. This house had been sitting on the market for a while. They dropped the price down to one point one million, uh, and Ben submitted an offer right at a million. Lo and behold, later that day, another offer came in right at one million. Agent countered both offers back. Uh, neither buyer would move up, but because Ben is not just a great guy, great negotiator, good agent, wrote a really clean offer. Um, you know, the listing agent knew about our team's reputation, knew that we do a lot of transactions, we have a good name for ourselves in the Valley, and accepted Ben's offer. Mm -hmm. No, that's huge, and ultimately benefits the client. Yep. Mm -hmm. I just got a client into contract as well on Friday, and we ended up getting a, a, a great deal on the home. Back in March, April, this home was, you know, all day, every day, 2.2 million. Um, and we just logged in mid one sixes for it. Yeah. So there's definitely great opportunities out there. And this is my second deal with the same agent this year. So definitely that relationship comes into play to help that offer get accepted. Fantastic. There's, there's been a few times, especially recently, where we kind of looked at each other and we knew we were submitting an offer and it's like, <laughs> dude, I got it. Because we thought we were coming in super low. Mm -hmm. But if you have good terms and you have you know a good strategy to get accepted, you guys sound way too boring in here, dude. Like well, we were actually talking about how we thought you might hijack our podcast and talk about things that are unrelatable to what the you, I got a person. top 10 list. Oh, I'm sure you do. I got do. a top 10 list, man. Because well, we, we know. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what it is. And, and uh, well, welcome, Mark. Uh, speaking about equity and that sort of thing, uh, I want to share with you guys. So nationwide, there is... Homeowners are sitting on $17.6 trillion worth of equity right now. The interesting thing, though, is that we've actually lost $1.5 trillion in equity since May, right? So, so talking about that shifting market, um, and so, so a lot of people have been asking us, okay, well, when are the foreclosures coming? <laughs> right. And, and and so let me give you some information about, you know, where we're at nationwide in terms of foreclosures. So as of last month, there's only there's fewer than 500,000 people uh, that are upside down on their mortgage nationwide. Now, that's doubled since May. May, there's 250,000 people that were upside down on the mortgage. Now we've seen a price correction you know, across the United States. And now there's about a half million people underwater. However, to put that in perspective, that only accounts for three point six 
of the total inventory throughout the United States. And on top of that, that 3.6 also includes people that are underwater or have less than 10% equity. So, so when you look at the fundamentals of our market and how equity rich these homeowners are across the United States, I see nothing on the horizon that's going to, you know, scream a rush of foreclosures hitting the market anytime ever in this cycle. I agree. I would agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I I heard something about there's going to be a lot more short sales, right? Um, I could see as short sales. To foreclosures. I could, you know, if you bought because a foreclosure, you're losing the property. Right. A short sale, you are just taking a loss on the property. Well, generally. yeah, the the lender's taking a loss. Correct. Yeah, the I could take an agreeable loss on the property. Yeah, I could see short sales. Some short sales in our market. If you bought over the last two years, you went in with five percent down, uh, and you lost your job. Yeah, you just got laid off. You can't get rehired for the next year or so. Your burn rate is going to be higher than mm-hmm. your ability to hold out. Yep. So I, I can certainly see some short sales in, in that regard. But again, even that is going to be a smaller percentage of last time. And I think the process will be a lot faster this time around. You know, back in the day, it could take six months to get a short sale approved. You know, I think now we'll see that probably closer to 60 to 90 days. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yes. And we talked like six months ago about how to get a house now, the down payments, generally speaking, are, are much higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one on a $2 million house is going to walk from a 20% down payment. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, that's not, I'm not saying it's a short sale, but you're not going to see people in the in the Bay, general Bay Area, you know, taking huge losses on properties that they bought in the last two, three years. Yeah, not, not as long as they continue to make the payments. Yeah, and there's not a big, uh, I should say, the amount of people getting laid off is not the same as it was at 08, 09, right? Not yet. Correct. You think, yeah. you think layoffs are coming like that? Well, you, you know, it's interesting you bring that up. There's a great website called uh, layoffs.fyi. This website has been tracking layoffs since COVID mm-hmm. hit. Mm-hmm. And right now they're running their list of all the companies that, ha- that are doing layoffs uh, in 2022. And you can group it by industry, by tech, by real right, estate, right. Uh, transportation. And it's really interesting to see, especially in the real estate segment, uh, you know, how, how many layoffs and contractions there are um, you know, throughout the United States, but especially here in the Bay Area. So I, I think next year we're gonna start to fill a little bit of that, right? We've already talked about how all the big tech companies yep. have have frozen all their hiring. Twitter's the biggest one right now. <laughs> I Facebook might be very close behind. Yeah, yeah but they're, they're slowing down a lot uh, for what they're bought or le- like their leased buildings. Well, yeah, not only that, but most of those platforms, their uh, leading source of income is ad revenue. Right, and a lot of corporations right now because they're anticipating the recession going into next year they're cutting back on on ads everything's going to retract i mean that's just what what's going to happen in a market like this right mm-hmm. it's just a matter of how long it's going to last right what do you think about the eight dollar a month program the twitter to, subscription to, to, yeah. to get to 20 <laughs> bucks or something to, to get verified yeah. on twitter yeah. i don't yeah. i don't know yeah. I'll pay $8. All right, so I got the top 10 list. <laughs> oh, boy. The top 10. These are the top 10 areas in California that are the biggest prime of losing values, right? Okay. Now, what's interesting is we've talked about time and time again is, you know, you can't generalize this stuff because we had this in our sales meeting today, right? Where Santa Clara is still seeing multiple offers and disclosure packets going out like crazy. Mm-hmm. Cupertino, the prime areas, right? Those outlying areas are going to have some issues. So mm-hmm. number one area that is poised to see a shift, or specifically a loss in property values. And what is the title of this list again? The top 10 areas in California, California. that are predicted to see the, that are predicted to have the quickest and highest loss in value. Over the next year or so? Yeah, Got it. over the next year, to see price drops, drops over the next year. Okay. Um, okay. um, yeah, is it by county, region? It, it's region, so they're more of like CPI areas and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, so you got like... You so know. you got San Francisco, Redwood City, South San Francisco. That's number one. Number and then one. They're, they're feeling it real bad, right? I mean, yeah. everyone's kind of moving out. They're not really going back there. Mm-hmm. Sacramento, Roseville had such a run-up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Visalia and Porterville. Yeah. That's number four. Where, or three, that's number three. Visalia. Where, where, Visalia. Where's Porterville? I mean, <laughs> so my grandfather actually used to live in Porterville. It's, it's just past Visalia. It's like, okay. it goes like Farmersville, Porterville, uh, Porterville. They have great chilies. So if you want to make like homemade <laughs> sauces and stuff, that's Visalia. a place to get. Dump, Isn't that Southern California? That's yeah. not Valencia. It's, it's central. Yeah. It's, I was it, thinking okay. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's central. Yeah. It's about three yeah. hours from like okay. down um, towards LA. Number four the... is Yuba City. 
That, that's, that's by Chico, Chico and Orville. Yeah, okay. yeah. Five, San Jose, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara. That's number five, so that's right in the mix. Fresno's number six. Um, Oakland, Hayward, Berkeley, seven. Mm-hmm. Madera, eight. Hanford, Cochran. I have no idea where that's at. Cochran. <laughs> so so Hanford. Cochran, Cochran. All right, fine. <laughs> I don't even know where it's at. So Han- Han- uh, you pass Hanford on your way to Visalia. Okay. And last is Vallejo, Fairfield. Right. So we're right in the middle. We're right in the middle. Right in the middle of that top ten. I no LA. disagree with that top ten wholeheartedly. I, I do too. If you look at the Case Scheller index, um, if you look at the Case Scheller index for the most overvalued markets across the United States, San Jose Bay Area. Now San Francisco, you're right, is up right. there. Yes. But if you look at uh, where they have San Jose Bay Area, it's almost neutral. Well, that's why it's in the middle of the list too. I yeah. think too, right? But so no San Diego, no LA, yeah. no. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm not well, saying your list is wrong. I just think I'm right. Hey, listen, I'm just, <laughs> hey, no. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. Right, wrong, and different, whatever. There for our consumers to. How many trick or treaters did you get? Zero. Thank you. So you goodness. didn't get to hand out your top ten candies. No, I did not. I did not. <laughs> but, he here did, the office. but he did wear his Hall of Fame uh, jacket today. Uh, I did. Pop, write that? Yeah. I thought it was Century Twenty One. Did you run our, <laughs> our still around? office meeting today? I did run the office meeting today. It was really exciting to be able to do that. I went back to the gym after two months and sat down on the couch and unfortunately didn't wake up. <laughs> oh, you know what's funny about that? I actually went to the gym on Sunday for about five minutes and then I turned <laughs> back and I just hey at least I went. There you go. What'd you do for five minutes? A uh, treadmill. Mm. Fifteen minutes. It was our fifteen. Has a five thousand square foot house. Doesn't have his own treadmill. In it. I actually do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> he probably can't find it. His house is too oh, big. Geez, now. Come on. Uh, all right. Anything else we have to go over? Um, you know, I was going to throw in there as far as where this. And you guys might have already touched base on this. You know, what's the prediction of how long this transition is going to change or going to mm-hmm. last? I mean, we got the interest rates, all that stuff. We got some hacks out there on the interest rates that we can talk about later, um, or people can call us and let us know. Um, uh, but you know, greedflation. Did we talk about greedflation? No. Did Take we talk about through. greedflation? So greedflation is a scenario where prices are artificially increased for simple greed and profit. Like right? gas prices. Ga- gas prices, bread, just all those basic things that we mm-hmm. deal with. And there's a certain amount of thought. I kind of believe that there's a certain amount of that going on. Again, when you have the gas companies having the highest posting, the highest profits they've ever done in history yeah. with these gas prices, I think there's a little yeah. greedflation going on there. It'll be interesting if that starts coming down first, because that's kind of, you know, in addition to interest rates, that's the fear that everybody has, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that uh, once the public realizes that, gets some pressure with these companies to bring them down to what reality is, right? That could shave off a little of these concerns. Most right? oil companies, though, are private, right? Exxon, Chevron. Sure. Sure. I mean, wh- why would they come down? I mean, I'm well, not going to stop. Pressure, they get pressure from the government. Yeah, of course. Oh, from of course. The go- well, I, I keep seeing yeah. the president. Yeah. Anyway, so just the word of the day. Thank greedflation. You. Greedflation. There you go. Greedflation. All, right. <laughs> All right. Cool stuff. Glad you guys carried us today. Yeah. Uh, we're not done, Mark. Yeah, oh, we're not? Yeah, we're oh. not done. Comes okay. in late, has a one thirty appointment, and then wants Drops to his end. top 10 list and then leaves. <laughs> done. That's it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I did learn that you can't look at the camera when you're doing podcasts. Somebody That's sent a... Nice you, little we have a lot of critics reminder. out there. If you're a critic, come on, come on. See how I think it came from our own team. Oh. Wasn't it a TikTok that was sent out you, yesterday? Or something? You seem more credible if you look away from the camera and oh, you say anything. Because you can't <laughs> leave people in the eye, then you, your credibility goes out the window. There's a camera. I'm, I'm looking at the camera right <laughs> Me now. Me too. Hi, guys. Look into my eyes. <laughs> um, All right. What's two, up? two current things that I uh, want to talk about. Construction mm-hmm. crews have broken ground to start clearing a lot of the older homes that uh, are buildings, I should say, that uh, Google has bought uh, to start the Google campus. Um, okay, interesting. Which is kind of cool because a lot of people think that it's like a five-year thing. It's more like a 15 to 20-year sure. thing. Yeah. Um, Matt Mahan is running against Cindy Chavez, voting us today, mm-hmm. just to put things into perspective. And he estimates that Google won't kind of be up and running for another 15, 20 years in, in the downtown area. Interesting. Well, but, I hope it's a little sooner than that because that is a long, uh, a lot of time to have so much displacement in I downtown agree. San Jose because mm-hmm. downtown San Jose has always been an issue. Mm-hmm. You, you know, it's it's hard. The, the, there's never really like a, a good 
a vibe, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's little pockets of downtown that are good, but it's struggled since you know I was a kid, sure. you know, going downtown. It doesn't have an identity like somewhere like San Diego, <clears throat> yeah, or San Francisco right. or right. Manhattan, right? So right. Um, you know, I, I hope that we start to see some of those buildings being finished in eight or so years, uh, you know, as they continue to expand on their footprint in downtown. Yeah. Do you, do you see skyscrapers coming to downtown San Jose? Like they can't, they can't because they of the airport. Because of the airport. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Google got a new survey done that says that you can build taller buildings on the other side of San Carlos than you can where it's like San Pedro is. In the flight path or something. That makes sense. <laughs> I think right now you can only go up to 300 feet, something like that. But well before Google, I'm not sure if you guys have been on 280 recently and noticed how much building has gone gone down over by uh, Santana Row. Mm -hmm. uh, they took that trailer park out. Oh, and yeah. I mean, those condos are coming up fast. And I wrote flames, it. Flames, man, one of my favorite restaurants they e took out. It yeah. went down in flames, know, literally. It did go down in flames. Uh, there's a 357,000 square foot building development that they are looking for a big tech company to go in over there, kind of by the movie <laughs> Great theater. timing. I said, yeah, <laughs> great timing. So it's pretty interesting. I think that area is definitely up and coming. And if you are in the market right now and you weren't able to take advantage of like 2008, 2009, 2011, whatever it was, yeah. and you've just been kind of sitting on the sidelines, I mean, hang on to that money because as opposed to going to Gilroy or Hollister and not actually getting what you want and taking that hour long commute, I think in the next, starting now all the way for the next six months or so, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to get some you know good opportunities, whether it's condos, townhomes, um, entry level single price, you know, million dollar homes in that South San Jose, Morgan Hill area, um, and you could put down as little as three and a half percent now. There's a this is a time that opportunities and and money's made mm -hmm. without, a doubt, without a doubt. And I was telling David, you're never gonna feel good about buying a house in a down market. Like you're always going to feel like it was still the bad time to buy, right? It feels like you're catching a falling knife. I think that's the kind of a mentality. falling knife. Yeah, yeah. wow. That's okay. that's a that's a falling the, knife. That's what I like. Heard. You're never going to reap the benefits until way down the road. Well, that, that's the short term feeling, right? Right, so, right. I mean, who who who's who's ever bought a house in Silicon Valley who didn't think they were overpaying for it, and then five to seven years from now, it's the greatest investment they ever made. Mm -hmm. Right. Again, you never know when the bottom is until you know three to four months after the bottom was there. Yeah. And uh, again, it's a great opportunity um, to pick property up and mm -hmm. if it's an hour the market continues to go down another 10 percent and it's okay if you bought a house earlier this year your interest rate is lower as long as you don't sell you're not losing money. you just got to stay in the house a little bit longer than you might have anticipated yeah simple as that so just don't 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 panic sell don't panic and don't try to catch a falling knife <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. Awesome. Boys and girls. Uh, oh, stuff. just real quick, you know, uh, for anybody that watched or didn't watch our last spooky podcast, I threw out the gift card uh, at the end of the podcast that if anybody listened to the entire thing, because we went long that day, I'd give them a gift card. And guess what? Nobody reached out to me. So I'm kind of oh, sad. Too bad. So either you throw it out there again? Either they didn't watch the whole podcast or they just didn't. My <laughs> gift card wasn't big enough. So I will throw it out again. I'll increase the value. Whoa. Oh, here we go. So if, you, if you've watched this entire thing, you text me 408-202-4210. I will give you a $100 Amazon gift card because apparently 50 bucks is not enough. Well, wait a minute. Days. I'll give them a $200 <laughs> gift card. Text me at 408-568-6602. How do you like that? I'll give them a pumpkin pie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed it. Yes. And until uh, next time, uh, we'll see you when we see you. Awesome. Take care, Thanks. everybody. Later. Bye.